So surrounding Verdun, in addition to the large fortifications like Fort Vaux and Fort Douaumont and the others, uh, there were a series of trenches that connected them all. And some of these places like here, you can see them reconstructed, fairly new to give you a sense of what it might have looked like at the time. But most of it looks more like what you see over here, which is just the remains of what once were the trenches but uh, again you have to use your imagination because all the trees are here but if all these trees were cleared away we are up on high ground it's a really strong defensive position and then of course connected by these huge forts uh, and so you, you know you've got a clear field of fire you've got a, a great place from which to defend but of course all of this was built with uh, late 19th century technology in mind uh, they couldn't conceive of things like 16, 17, 18 inch guns that could fire these huge multi-ton projectiles at a fortification. So I had to stop here. Right down this road a little ways is where the Douaumont Ossuary is. And just behind me, you can start to see coming into view Fort Douaumont. But I saw this sign and then I saw right here, it said Tombs of Heroes. And just down a couple of steps, of course you can see these craters, are the graves of two unknown heroes, it says. So one of the things about the Verdun battlefield is that just everywhere you go, just driving around, you just see the ruins of fortifications. You see the trenches everywhere. I'm near the monument to Colonel Driant, and just right here, I mean, just right by the side of the road, you see concrete with the steel bar inside of it. And you see it's been filled in, but there was obviously a bunker here. And then, uh, you know, I'm right, here's the main road right there. and. You come up here then and you see the remains of trenches. And it's just everywhere like that. I mean, you, you cannot drive around this area and not see constant reminders of the Great War. visitors to the Verdun battlefield were often shown, let's say, a curious sight. Local guides who were often veterans of the Great War would regale tourists with this tale of a group of French soldiers who were standing upright in their trench, bayonets fixed, ready to repel the oncoming German attack when they were buried alive by the explosion of several shells nearby. As evidence, they would show the tips of bayonets that could be seen sticking up 
out of the dirt. And so was born the legend in French. It's known as the Tranche de Bayonet, the trench of the bayonets. On the 8th of November, 1920, a stirring eulogy to the men of the 137th Infantry Re Regiment who were assumed to lie here was given at the site. And among those who were present was the President of the French Republic, a rich American who was sufficiently impressed by what he saw, decided to contribute out of his own pocket for the construction of a monument over the trench to protect its occupants. That's what you see today. And I'll give you some more looks at uh, the area here in a minute. The truth, however, is, well, let's say a little less interesting. investigators determined that the bodies that are inside this trench, and there are people buried here, are laid horizontally, as is typical for a grave. And the Germans who occupied this area had simply used the bayonets sticking up as temporary grave markers. Nevertheless, this monument is still here today. And while it isn't quite what it seems, and there aren't even any bayonets sticking up anymore, there used to be. I've seen pictures of it. Uh, this still is a war grave, and it's a monument to the French soldiers of the 137th Infantry Regiment, for whom this is indeed their final resting place. story of the trench of the bayonets actually, I think, illustrates something quite well. And that is that very often in history, especially in war history, there are these fantastical stories that you hear and you wonder sometimes if they're true. And as was the case with the trench of the bayonets, there is some truth to most of those stories. Although, they also sometimes get blown out of proportion, embellished, things of that nature. And so it's important to investigate everything. It's important to ask a lot of questions. That's what happened here. They did an investigation to determine if what was believed was actually the case, that there were men who were standing up and buried in place. And though it didn't happen here, that did happen. Uh, for example, I visited the grave of uh, the poet Joyce Kilmer, who was an American who was killed in action on a scouting mission my first day here. And uh, he actually wrote a poem about an incident that happened with their unit where a number of Americans were indeed buried alive and killed by artillery that struck in the area. Uh, and buried them in their trenches. So that sort of thing did happen, and that's probably what led to this story being told, because it was a believable thing, because men who had been in combat knew that that sort of thing did happen. So while it didn't happen here, it is an important reminder that those kinds of horrors of war did in fact exist. Mm -hmm. 